Merry Christmas, everyone. And yes, Happy New Year, too, um, because our Sabbath falls on New Year's Day this year. We'll be focused on the naming of Jesus. And just for fun, I looked it up. New Year's Day falls on a Sunday the next time, not until 2034, you know, over a decade from now. Well, I hope you are enjoying the 12 days of Christmas right now. We are in the midst of the Christmas season, and I hope that uh, God will grant you many blessings throughout the coming year. Take care. The Holy Gospel is according to St. Luke, the second chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let us now go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they, had, they made known what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all that they had heard and seen as it had been told them. And after eight days had passed, it was time to circumcise the child. And he was called Jesus, the name given by the angel before he was conceived in the womb. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Well, grace to you and peace from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. You know, I can't think of a better way to start this New Year's gathering than with other believers and those worshiping God. What's so special about this year is that we focus on the naming of Jesus, and we only do that on January 1. Do you know the story of how they came up with your name? I can tell you my name came from Gone with the Wind with that super sweet character called Miss Melanie. And my mother had it in the back of her mind since she saw the film when it came out in December of 1938, decades before I was born. She was uh, just about to be a newlywed at the time. So I always thought it was pretty special that she had held on to that name for so long and that it was finally granted to me. So what about you? You know, in what ways has your name shaped who you became? Was it a name on the top 10 most popular names during the year? Maybe that you were born? Was it a name that was found in the Bible? Or maybe you were named after a grandparent? Regardless, I think there is so much power in whatever name we've been bestowed by our families, along with the unique hopes for each of us at the time of our births. So imagine this. Jesus' name was held in wait since the beginning of creation, at the time when he was with God and known only as the Word. Centuries of waiting went by for his arrival using no less than 50 meanings related to that name. 50. A lot more for him to live up to than any of us could imagine. Names like Savior, Redeemer, Bread of Life, Lord, Creator, Beloved Son, Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Prince of Peace, King of Kings, and on and on with the most important name granted as the reason why he was delivered to us on earth in the first place. And that name is Savior. So what's in a name? His name is at the heart of the seasons of our life in the church. So for example, Advent being our time of waiting for his arrival, known as his name, Emmanuel. And what about Christmas? When we celebrate his name as the Messiah. Holy Week, Easter, you know, those times of Jesus' death and resurrection as our Savior. The time when his birth was brought full circle and returned him back to heaven. 
as I've looked around during the, the season of Christmas, you know, and you think about the season and all the different signs that are in our sanctuary, I invite you to embrace the Christ child for the full days, 12 days of Christmas with all of its symbols of life and hope that are on full display right now. And I find that even as Christians, many of us tend to rush past those 12 days of Christmas. Let's rush right into the new year sooner than what we need. And that's one of the reasons why we very deliberately keep all those symbols during that season in our sanctuaries until the day of Epiphany, January 6th, when it all comes full circle with our waiting for the Magi, and there they are bringing gifts to the Christ child. They're bringing them to Jesus rather than exchanging gifts. And of course, I really do want to wish you a new year as well. To start the new year, I got some advice from children because they often see the world with fresh eyes. A few years ago, um, of all places, the magazine Men's Health celebrated the new year by publishing a list of advice from kids for men to give a try. Gabriella, age seven, had this advice for folks who want to get into shape. Run around the backyard just like your dog does. I mean, it keeps him in really good shape and he always seems so happy about it. What about Charlie, age five? He had advice for men who want to improve their relationship with either their girlfriends or their wives. He advised, don't put glue stick in her hair. It sounds like it's going to be funny, but she never thinks so. And for those who want to have more money in the new year, a key, age five, says this, buy more things that give you back more change. If you have a lot of coins, your pockets will be heavy and you'll be thinking, hey, I am rich, because it's all about those heavy pockets. So what about you? What advice will you give yourself or to others in how to have a happy new year? I hope that in this new year, you will have heavy pockets, a lot of coins in them, and also a light heart. But none of us can really predict what events this year is gonna hold for us, can we? I mean, when we look back at this past year, some of us had unexpected joys. Some of us went through some unexpected great challenges or even heartbreaks, and maybe you had a little bit of both. And because of these joys and challenges, we're not the same people that we were 365 days ago. We're not even the same people we were a couple years ago before the difficult weather conditions ruined a lot of our holidays and time with family and even time for worship. So what advice do you have for the kids? What advice do you have for yourself and for others? I don't know, I guess my best advice for a new year is for all of us, including myself, to live in the present tense as much as possible. Don't stay stuck in past histories, limitations, thinking of the past even as being better than the present. Oh, back then, things were so much better. But stay away from that. And rather than laying unrealistic expectations for yourself, or maybe stressing about all the things that can go wrong in the future, stay instead in the present. Let God support you wherever you are right now and guide you through whatever may be coming along. I know how hard it is to stay in the present, and yet isn't it so liberating when we can do it, when we can release the burdens that hold us back and lift them over onto the strong arms of God. I really don't know what this new year is going to hold for you or for me, but I do know that God's plans and God's promises never fail, not in the present or the past, and no doubt even into the future. And because of that, we can keep moving forward in faith, 
no matter what this new year ends up throwing at us. So in the meantime, stay as closely connected to Jesus as you can. Call on him using whatever of the 50 names that you need at the time. Wonderful Counselor, Redeemer, Mighty God, The Almighty, Good Shepherd. How about The Rock, The Prince of Peace, or Savior? Amen.